More than 40 infectious diseases specialists from across Canada have written to the federal government calling for an end to fur farming. The doctors say animals such as mink can contract and spread COVID-19 and endanger public health. Dr. Jan Hayek helped write that letter. He's an infectious diseases specialist at the Vancouver General Hospital and a clinical assistant professor of medicine at the University of British Columbia. Good morning, Dr. Hayek. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Thank you. Well, as uh, an infectious diseases specialist, why did you feel it was necessary to write this letter and put this on the radar in this way? So it was written along with colleagues. Over 50 of us so far have signed. Many of us feel a, a kind of professional responsibility to advocate for public health measures or other measures to reduce the risk for future pandemics and to reduce the risk of worsening this current pandemic that we're in. And uh, mink may not be on everyone's radar. Not everyone knows kind of the links between animal health and human health and uh, particularly the risks of large, intensively farmed minks who are very highly susceptible to getting COVID-19 themselves. And then there's a risk that the mutations, or it has been shown in countries like Denmark, that the mutations have a higher risk of amplifying and developing when they spread amongst mink. And then it could spread back to humans with some mutations that it had accrued. And that risk is a, a real risk for human health and for the risk for this COVID-19 pandemic. Right. And you mentioned that this showed up in, in Denmark and the Netherlands as well and, and really brought attention to the, the risks or the fact that mink can even get SARS and, and COVID-19. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yes. You know, it, it's been in over 10 countries now, over 400 farms, where COVID-19, the SARS-CoV-2 virus, has jumped from humans to mink. And in about three countries now, it's clear that from their sequencing of the virus and the, the temporal course of the infection, that it spread from those mink back into humans. And it has to do with the way the virus enters through this ACE2 receptor. The spike protein targets an ACE2 receptor. And in mink, they have a similar type of ACE2 receptor to humans. This ACE2 receptor and its similarity to humans is why mink are probably more susceptible to being infected with SARS-CoV-2. And also the way that mink are farmed with tens of thousands of them together in, in close quarters. How did Denmark and the Netherlands deal with this issue? Netherlands decided to end fur farming completely. They killed all the animals for fur, and then they prevented them from continuing that industry. Mm-hmm. Denmark uh, decided to just cull all the mink. They, they had a particularly concern because there was a new variant that had emerged on mink fur farms that were spreading in the community. Although that variant wasn't particularly serious at that time, it wasn't clear. And the idea was that they don't want one that emerges and spreads in the community. And so they called all the mink. They've extended the ban now till about 2023 when mm. they'll revisit whether they'll allow the mm. industry to continue. And here in Canada, I gather in B.C., after COVID outbreaks on, on at least three farms, B.C.'s announced it's shutting down mink farming. We don't know of any cases of COVID-19 on Nova Scotia mink farms. So why do you think it should be a a Canada-wide ban rather than just in the provinces where it's been detected? Yeah, I I think because, you know, there were risk assessments about the likelihood of this happening. The risk assessments vary from very likely to low likely and of an uncertainty. And the idea is that that COVID-19 is still circulating amongst the provinces, there, there are still humans getting sick with COVID-19. And so where humans that are sick with COVID-19 are interacting with animals on fur farms, that risk exists. And Dr. Hayek, something you mentioned that caught my ear is about the, the possible mutations that might happen in mink and then be spread back to humans. What is the, what is the risk, if you can put that in context? Yeah, I think it's hard to put the, the risk into numbers. I think the, statistically the chance is quite low. And the, uh, the idea is that uh, a human interacts with mink, the virus spreads onto the mink, and as it adapts to the mink, and then it spreads very quickly throughout that whole mink fur farm, it can kind of evolve on a parallel track. And then as we get our pandemic under control, it can jump back into us through at a later date after it has changed on those mink. And uh, that's that's the big concern. And that's a chance that many of us don't want to take. Uh, and has that actually happened, that a variant has jumped from from mink to workers? 
that's it. That's what happened in so in in several countries now. It, it's happened that a, a variant. There was a variant, uh, you know, that jumped from a mink to humans in the Netherlands in, in Denmark that spread into the community, including a long-term care facility. Now that variant wasn't a variant of concern. It wasn't uh, a variant that was associated with increased mortality or marked increased transmission. The variant w- was associated with a uh, potential resistance to some of our immune response. So there was worry that the vaccines may not be as effective. And so although this particular variant didn't change the course of our pandemic, there was a strong response to prevent that from happening and from other variants to emerge. So as we said, Denmark called all their mink and uh, it it actually locked down that area. And people were prevented from traveling from that area to the rest of the country and, and from other countries. UK said no one from Denmark can come to UK. There is the the idea that maybe you can you can vaccinate and prevent this from happening. Not sure about the variant or the development of those, but from the the existing variants or strains of COVID nineteen from spreading. In fact, here in Nova Scotia last summer, when Delta was the main concern, the Department of Agriculture told us mink farms have biosecurity practices in place, and that mink farm workers are being vacu- vaccinated, tested with the rapid tests. How well can those measures prevent some of the concerns that you're mentioning? Yeah, I think those are essential. So, you know, because of this public health risk, we have to take it very seriously and to do all we can to prevent that risk to the public. Those measures, they're good, but they're not foolproof. As we've seen in BC, BC tried as well. Targeted public health measures, targeted biosecurity measures were put in place. There were visits on the farms and even vaccination. So our mink fur farmers and staff on mink fur farms were prioritized for vaccine, to receive the vaccine, kind of like healthcare workers and other people who are uh, at high risk groups and vulnerable to COVID-19. But even despite that, we had our outbreaks. Have you heard anything back, Dr. Hayek, from the federal government regarding your letter? I, I have not heard back yet. I'm hoping to hear back. Well, Dr. Hayek, thanks very much for being here this morning to talk about the the public health risks that you've outlined in the letter to the federal government. Um, we will certainly follow up and see what uh, what comes out of it. Thanks again. Okay, thank you very much. That's Dr. Jan Hayek, an infectious diseases specialist at the Vancouver General Hospital and a clinical assistant professor of medicine at the University of BC. We contacted the province about this. A spokesperson sent a statement that says, The virus that causes COVID-19 is primarily a human disease. There have been no reported cases of the virus in mink on mink farms in Nova Scotia. Any decisions about the future of the mink farming industry will be based on scientific evidence and public safety.